technology has been shifting constantly since 1839, and we can only expect that it will continue to shift. Everyone's a photographer now. Everyone carries a camera in their purse or pocket. We make photographs in a different way from the way we used to, but we make them for the same reasons. I mean, I would argue that a, a 19th century Victorian family album has exactly the same purpose as the 200 pictures of your kid that you carry on your phone. I was working in the Apparatus Division Research Laboratories. My supervisor came to me one day and said, um, look at a new uh, type of imager that had just become available called Charge Couple Device Imager. And that was the Fairchild device. It was called the CCD201. I thought if I could build a, some sort of device that would capture an image, well, that's called a camera. Uh, I called it my baby because it made me cry a lot. I always say that. What I was dealing with was something that could convert a light pattern to a charge pattern, but I had to get that charge pattern off of the device really quickly and store it somewhere. So I was going to try to make a digital conversion device and then store it in RAM. And so I said I needed a form of permanent storage that didn't require battery. That was easy, actually, because magnetic tape on cassettes were being used for all kinds of reasons. At the early days of computers, they were storing digital information. People always talk about the building the camera. Well, half this effort, probably more than half the effort, was building the playback unit, make it suitable for a television signal, because that was the only way to electronically look at an image. And this was all digital. Right from the output of that CCD, all the way through to right to the output of the TV set. That was digital, everywhere in between. I'll give you kind of a, a, a timeline of, of digital photography. We got Steve Sasson in 1975 building the first truly digital camera. In 1986, Eastman Kodak Company comes out with the megapixel sensor. Uh, 1987, 88, Jim McGarvey builds tactical camera, which evolves into the 1991 Kodak DCS. Came in a, uh, a rather hefty uh, suitcase that contained the camera and the, and the storage device. The next year, they were able to actually combine all of those parts into one smaller body, the DCS-200. In 1994, the Apple QuickTake 100 uh, is the consumer camera. The, the first megapixel consumer camera is the Kodak DC-210 1999. It's a very short timeline here when you get into it, maybe 20 years or so. And of course, now everybody has either a smartphone or a tablet with a camera built in. First digital camera I ever saw, you had to load a floppy disk in, and I was just my mind was blown when I saw that. <laughs> I was like, I was like, how does you know what is this? You could put you know a picture on a computer now. There's generations of kids now that are alive that'll never know you know what film is like and what you know leaping through a shoebox full of you know four by sixes from Motofoto, you know things like that. It's just that that's gone. That's Talbot. That's the man who invented the negative. Digital made the negative obsolete, and this is the way we see images. It can be deleted by accident. It's not a physical thing. We used to have the possibility that you might run across a photograph of your grandmother when she was 18 years old in the back of a drawer that nobody remembered or knew about. And suddenly, you've got this picture that can be found later and interpreted. And when you have a digital image, um, what is the thing that you have? You have code or something. Rarely do people print out their photographs anymore. When we're seeing things sort of ephemerally on a screen, it becomes very much like everything else we see on a screen. Our relationship to memory with regard to the photographic image is changing, and it'll be really interesting to see where that goes. It's surprising to most people when, when I tell them I love digital. I mean, I, I just love the technology of digital, and, and they'll, they'll look at me and think it's heresy. But artists have come to a point where many of them are saying, I feel like the machine is in control and I want to have my hands in this object. When the finished product is, is something other than a computer screen, it, it harkens back to the day when, when photography was a craft. It's not just about the image, although the image is king. It's about the object itself, and you made that object.